To, uh, to Sir John and Sly, what I've done this time was uh, we'll just look at some at the questions quickly because we've been through now the three books um, and a lot of this is repeat so um, I thought I'll just put the questions up and get us thinking. But question one, Dave asks us, to whom is the epistle addressed, and why did John rejoice over this individual? So we'll read uh, Third John, we'll read verses 1 to 4, and we'll do two verses each, and we'll start on this side this morning for a change. And Veronica, can I get you to do verse 1 and 2? Um, okay, and uh, Menchi, do you want to read verses 3 and 4? For I rejoice greatly when Breton came and bear witness unto thy truth even as the workers in food. Greater joy have I none than this, to hear of my children walking in the field. Okay, so who's it addressed to? First off, Dave asks us. Gaius, somebody say? Gaius? Okay, Gaius. We really know nothing of Gaius, do we? Um we don't know who he is. There's, there is some different thoughts on the different names in the New Testament where Gaius is used, but we really don't know anything about him. But we only know one thing. What does John say about him? He's an elder. The elder. Okay, what does John think of him? He's an elder. He loves him. Yeah, loves him in the truth, John says. The, el the elder is the one sending the greeting. The Not which? The elder. Yes. He's sending the greeting to Gaius. Right, to Gaius, right. And who was the elder in Second John? We, we assume, remember when we were looking at who wrote the epistles? It was John. John's continuing um, with that. Um, and when John says that he loves Gaius in the truth... That just simply means uh, Gaius was associated with the truth and also with those who hold to truth. Remember, this is how John kind of speaks all through his epistles. And uh, he also loves him in the truth because of what? What do you see there? Or maybe this is what I saw. <laughs> he loved him because Gaius <coughs> obviously um, opposes the false teachers. Okay, if he stood for truth, and if he stood with those that taught truth, then that automatically means that he opposes um, the false teachers and the false doctrine. Um, we have to presume that. That's just automatically. And... Also, John, why does he rejoice? What do you see there? Why does John rejoice for him? In verse 3. Well, I don't know if he's rejoicing for him, but he is rejoicing when brethren come and testify of the truth that is in Gaius. <laughs> okay. And what about others? What, what do you see there? Well, it is greater joy to hear that uh, children walk in faith. Okay, okay. 
I was trying to get out when brethren, other brethren were telling John of, of Gaius's um, faithfulness. It just, it reminded me that, you know, we are to encourage one another, and there's nothing wrong with speaking of one's example to another brother or sister. That, you know, sometimes we're afraid of that. Well, maybe we're, um, we're going to make that person proud or, or they'll think they're better. No, um, we can encourage one another in that way. Um, you know, uh, we all go out for lunch or, or you know, or you're at work and you go out for lunch with your employers and you say a prayer. You know, if someone else knows that. There's nothing wrong with letting that be known. That's encouraging um, because the way I look at it, uh, I know Gord has done that, then when I'm in that situation, I'm reminded of that. You know, I'm reminded of, of Gord's example. And that moves me. Well, that's what we should be doing. Um, you know, so from what John is, is uh, rejoicing over here, um, hearing what other brethren are saying about Gaius, that's the way we should be as, uh, as Christians. What are thoughts? Then we'll go to uh, question two. Dave asks us, how do the following passages provide evidence indicating that the same author who wrote Third John is also responsible for having written the gospel and other epistles of John? This is all repeat now again. Um, we've done this now with the with First John and Second John, but um, maybe to kind of there's some more deeper questions as we move on here. Um, our first one, Third John one and Second John one. Um, go ahead. Well, if you've been sending me letters over the years and. The last time you forget to sign your name, I can just tell by the way you word things that, yeah, that's from Bill. He just forgot to sign it. Right. And if you read the beginning of Second uh, John and First John, the wording is very similar. It's consistency. Yes. That, exactly. Not everybody's going to use that kind of word. Everybody takes like a fingerprint on this. Exactly. We all use different phrases, different ways of making points. You're right. Um, and in our first uh, one there, John again identifies himself as the elder. He's done that all along. And um, in Third John, in verses 3 and 4, um, verses 3 and 4 again, for I rejoice greatly. Um, and then look back to Second John, verse 4. And how does that verse, how does John speak again there? Someone say? He's always rejoicing. Yep, right. He's always rejoicing when the children are found walking in the truth. Because that's the premise of the whole John book. Right, that's, that's how John has spoke. He indicates all the time his great joy. Um, his love for the brush, brethren. He focuses always on those who are walking in the truth. And he makes that point, doesn't he? It all through. And then uh, back over to Third John, verse 11. Uh, Beloved, I do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. And then... Look back to 1 John and chapter 2 and verse 29. Yes, 29. If you know that he is righteous, 
you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And chapter 3 and verse 10, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor he who does not love his brother. Um, what thoughts come out of all those verses that strike you? What is he uh, defining in all of them? Verses. Don't, don't they all define righteous people? That's, that's a, and they're all the same wording, the same phrases. John defines um, righteous people in the same manner, it, all through there. And then uh, again, Dave's got. Uh, 3 John 11 and 1 John 3 and verse 6, Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Um, <clears throat> what comes to mind there? Um, think of imitation, imitating. Who, who are we to imitate? Right. And John makes all these same points. It's, you know, we've been through these um, through all our book. Um, and Third John fourteen, <laughs> verse fourteen, um, John says, "But I hope to see you shortly, and we shall speak face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name." And then back in his gospel, back in his gospel in John 15, Jesus speaks here. And I think this is what Dave wants us <clears throat> to see in this verse. I read it a few times before it, it kind of jumped out at me. But chapter 15 of the gospel of John, Jesus says in verse 13, Greater love has no one than this, that you lay down one's life for his friends. And verse 14, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. There's one phrase in there that Jesus uses that John also used in his verse. Speaking of one another. What do you see there? What is John? In third John verse 14, what does he call um, his readers? Friends. Friends. Very good. That's all. I, that's what I saw in, uh, in Dave's question. Um, and again, we've all through First and Second John, we've kind of looked at all these same thoughts. But we move on to uh, question three. And how is the importance of divinely revealed truth emphasized in the following passages? Look at 3 John, verse 1. 1 John and 3 John and verse 1. Yuri, do you want to read that, please? Uh, sure. Uh, the elder, uh, the beloved uh, Gaius, who was with whom I love, he too. Okay. So what is, what is truth? Um, what's the basis of truth? in that verse. I think it would be the pointing to the gospel to be the truth. Oh, okay. The words of Christ. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of how I could get you to see <laughs> what Dave's uh, thoughts were here. What I saw is that truth 
is the basis for giving and receiving love. I think that's where he was headed with that. Um, I think we've, a few of Dave's thoughts here, I thought we've been through from Genesis now and and a lot of Dave's, Jeremy? It's the same way he started Second John. Uh, hey, to the to the, the elect lady and her children who I love in the truth. Uh, so it seems to be a, a familiar greeting for John. Right. And for people who have faith that are common, or well, they have love that is common. Right. And it surrounds the truth. You don't have love. It's not a, a love that is based on something other than God. And, right. Yeah, okay. That's right. Where, that's the way I see it, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And I, since our study now beginning in First John, um, John promotes that thought more so than all the epistles that we've looked at and the apostles so far. Um, that was John's nature. And remember now John's quite aged. He's older. So... He's experienced more in life. He understands uh, the power of truth, but he also understands the need for love and the power of that. And I, I think, personally, that's why he uh, referenced it so much. But then, uh, 3 John and verse 3. Uh, kind of see, did you want to read that, please? For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walked in the truth. Okay, and what's, what does John reveal there? What does he emphasize there about truth? And again, remember we... We were supposed to be reading 1 John? Is that 3rd John? 3rd John. Sorry, 3rd John. Oh, it was brethren came testified in the truth is in you? Oh, I didn't say you're in second. Yeah, third John, the verse three. There's no sunshine this morning. We're still asleep. Okay. <clears throat> and it's repeat again. But of the, how does he emphasize the truth, Jeremy? It had been testified to them, and <clears throat> that they walk in it. So, in other words, you have you have, you first had to have it testified in the truth. So, in other words, someone came and taught them. Right. And then. After they taught them, they believe that truth, and they walk in it. So in other words, they live by it. Right, right. We pointed all this out last week. Dave's very methodical in a lot of his questions, but it is reminders. Um, Jeff? All these uh, verses remind us that there's a standard. Yes. Especially when you walk by something. Uh, it is not possible... For everyone to walk by something, so they'll try the truth unless there is a standard for that. Um, right. Cannot be done. Um, so all these verses remind us that there is a standard <clears throat> for that truth. Right, right. And verse four, third John verse four, um, speaks again of of walking in truth. But what does that bring for us? Um, what does that do for us emotionally when we walk in it and when we see others walk in it? We're happy. The which part? We're happy. Oh, okay, right. Joy, happy. That's what John's saying. Um, now verse 8 in uh, Third John, verse 8, uh, where are we? Henry, do you want to read verse 8? Please. We therefore are to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Okay. What uh, what does he emphasize there about truth? It's it's the basis for what? Think of others. Working for the good of others. It, We're working for the good of others. So in other words, teaching. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's one point. Yeah. Receiving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's what Dave was after. Um, So supporting. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, sometimes we don't use other material. You're not exactly sure where they're headed from. So then we do it what we see. Um, It's the basis for receiving someone as a guest. Okay? Um, And truth truth proves a fellow worker, doesn't it? And it shows the difference of how we treat people. We're to love everyone. Yes. But we treat brethren differently. Uh, We treat all brethren the same. That's what we're, we're to treat. We're not to have favoritism between brethren. Right. But we treat brethren differently than we do the world. We may go a little extra for our brethren than maybe we go for the world. It's not that we love, it's not that we hate the world, but we are told, especially of those in the household of faith, so in other words, we do things for our brethren maybe we wouldn't do for other people. Right. Uh, and so you receive that the truth, that standard Jeff talked about, is how we measure who our brethren are. Uh, and so we receive them, we, we become fellow workers with them, we're all pulling in the same direction. Uh, that's, uh, right. that's what John would be getting at, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and thinking back to First John, um, we're a family. We're the family of God. We've been begotten by God. God has accepted us in, to, to his family. Um, and that motivates us, Kyle. And then there is a verse that says, Be good to all men, especially to the household of faith. So we do good to other people too, most especially the household of faith. Right, so, right. So the that, truth will be seen in us. Yeah. The love that, of God. Exactly. That word especially is, is always good to remember that. Like Jerry said, we love all men. Um, but especially those of the household of God. So especially brings to mind a difference. There's a difference in that love, you know. Um, And we need to see that, to understand that. Um, And verse 12, 3rd John and verse 12. uh, Terry, do you want to read that or do you want me to get Tim? Tim, Tim, do you want to read verse 12, please? Third John. Demetrius is brother spoken of by everyone, and even by the truth itself. We also speak well of him. And you know that our testimony is true. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Um, what do we see there? What does what does truth do according to that verse? Can you think? Truth will give a good testimony of oneself. Okay, okay, okay. I had I thought Dave was heading that it proves our worth to others. Kind of similar to what you said, Jerry. Not only to the brethren, but to those in the world. Oh, like yes. As far as the truth, <clears throat> others should see that there's a difference in the way we act, walk, think, do. Like as far as there's things that we do or don't do, right. and that that uh, and people might ask, well, why don't you do that? Why don't you lie? Why don't you steal? Why don't you hate? Like as far as how come you always seem to take abuse, not like verbal abuse and other things from maybe co-workers or something. Why, why don't you lash out? Like I said, the, the truth teaches us how to behave, and it gives us a good testimony mm-hmm. among those because our bosses should say, they're very hardworking. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're trustworthy. They're, 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 as far as th- those, are, those are traits that, yes, people in the world can have, but especially Christians should have those things. Right. And, and uh, hopefully I get you to ask them why. Because uh, others are like, as far as oftentimes at work, they're like, the coworkers don't act like this. Why do you? Right, exactly, and and all through John's um, epistles, it's reminded me that 
um, we're known by our love because our love is different than worldly love. Remember, <clears throat> uh, someone pointed out back a few lessons ago, you know, our love when we lived in the world was, it was kind of split, wasn't it? Part of it was selfish love. We, we you know, we gained, saw ways to gain things for ourselves. So we've done that. And then, yes, the other side is, yeah, we, we helped out others. Yeah. You know, we've done our best. Um, but now as a Christian, you know, we don't have that split anymore in, in our love. Um, there should be no selfish desire in us. Um, and John seems to me has pointed that out to us all through his, his epistles. Um, you know, the love for the brethren um, surpasses... <coughs> Uh, anything we ever knew before and the, and the reason we know now how to do that is because of what God has done for us what Christ has done for us um, it seems to me that um, that puts a greater desire into us um, for love Henry <coughs> my Understanding and the testimony of truth is, is practice is Christianity in life and the testimony to those around us to prove what is worse to be a Christian to be followers of Jesus Christ. If we are this, uh, if we are pleased to God, also we are beneficial to yourself, beneficial to others. Right. We are Christian. We are get something. The deep peace, joy, from the truth. The people we are seeing, you are you are example, and you come to example the people that come to come to the truth. Right. That's what. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, you know, it's uh, we're to be aware of that, aren't we? Our actions. Um, because they do testify of us. So other thoughts then, we'll... Uh, you're going to have to introduce the next question. The which? I said you're going to have to introduce the next question if you're wanting to. Um, the bell's about to go. Oh, question four? Yeah, if you're wanting to introduce it. Yeah, oh, thank you. Well, we could just quickly then... Um, Dave asks us, how... Had Gaius demonstrated his love for God, for truth, and the brethren, and why would he be considered a fellow worker for the truth? And verses 5 to 8, I'll read them and quickly and scan over them yourself. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers. That's speaking to Gaius, okay? Who have borne witness of your love before the church if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Do you see anything quickly there? No, there's, he's speaking to Gaius, and Gaius has done things to others. And that's what is in these three verses. Um, who did he... Did he was hospitable, it seems, it, uh, to others who came through, workers in the truth. So in other words, he housed, he, he housed uh, people who came, he encouraged people who came like right. as far as he, he was he was one who did what a christian should be doing uh and helping others okay right right and the point he helped the brethren but who else did he help does it say that in oh, verse what gentiles and so well strangers yeah i thought strangers Colin. Well, he reminds me of the good smart 
Yes. Yes. Exactly. That's it's a good point. Yeah, he helps. He sacrificed his time. Okay, Jer said uh, he sacrifices worldly goods. He helped strangers, um, and he encouraged those who were spreading the gospel. I'm not ashamed to.